Hi guys, how you doing? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live, and I'm here with a very special guest. It's Jason. So, how you doing today? I'm good. How you doing? Very good. And we're here to talk about Stilcana Inc. So, why don't we just get started? How? Why don't you tell us a little bit about Stilcana Inc. Stilcana. Well, Stilcana has only been Stilcana really for the last four months, and uh, what we are and, and what we're trying to do is become uh, a leader in the bulk sale uh, of CBD isolate in Europe and the world. Uh, not only sale, but obviously manufacture. So we've got uh, the uh, hemp fields in Poland, and we'll have two extraction facilities online in Europe uh, for the fourth quarter of this year. And why the focus on the European markets? Uh, well, there's a number of reasons. Uh, one, it's very big. Uh, the last estimate uh, for 2021, I believe, was 66 billion. Wow. Uh, it's also 28 uh, separate companies that, or sorry, countries that we can freely move our uh, hemp and hemp-related products across borders. Uh, and I guess the, the third reason is that um, you know we're one of the leaders in the space because we were there before everybody started talking about CBD. Uh, CBD is quite new. A lot of people and a lot of companies are jumping into it headlong right now. Uh, but my farmers have been farming in, in Poland for the last 20 years. Wow. In fact, their parents were farming hemp even prior to that. So it really comes down to experience. Um, also, CBD has been legally available uh, on the shelves in Europe for the last five years. Uh, whereas uh, the U.S. just came online now, uh, Canada, you still really can't buy CBD-related uh, products. Uh, yet you can go get high and smoke a joint. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, Europe is a great spot because they're used to it, they know it, and uh, and they know how to grow it. And, and that was where our opportunity lay. That's great. And can you elaborate on your partnership with Dragonfly Biosciences LLC? Yes. Uh, so Dragonfly is a leader in CBD products in Europe. Uh, they're on the shelves of Boots. Uh, they've just signed a deal with uh, Harrods. Uh, they are, have an 85% footprint uh, on the shelves in, in London. Wow. Uh, so there are, you know, you can't walk very far in London without finding uh, uh, Dragonfly products. Um, how the relationship started was that just over, well, I guess almost a year ago, uh, I had visited their fields in Bulgaria, which were 100% uh, grown organically. I was very impressed with the team and they needed help with the financing of their extraction facility in Romania. And so uh, still kind of stepped up uh, and we're, we brought our technology and our team and our money uh, to build up that extraction facility to extract their CBD for them. Uh, this plant, I was just there, it's incredible. It's built to GMP standards. Uh, and uh, we should be processing their uh, first batch of CBD out of Romania for the fourth quarter of this year. Wow. Uh, we'll have a film coming out in the next uh, 10 days uh, where I've done a walkthrough and a tour with the local mayor uh, and showed him the facility and we're very excited to get started. Wow, seems like you guys are doing a lot of work. Now, are there any other future? Oh, there's one more thing I should add. Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. This is very, very important. So uh, Dragonfly are not only our partners uh, uh, in the facility, they own 51%, we own 49. Uh, but what's really great about this deal uh, was that it gets us straight into revenue. Uh, so we've great. got a contract that can bring up to $40 million uh, Canadian uh, over the next three years of uh, processing exclusively all of their CBD uh, for their uh, acreages in, in uh, Bulgaria. Wow, that's impressive. I had to get that out there, sorry. No, it's good, that's good. <laughs> we want to know everything. Get it all out there. Is there any other future partnerships that you're working on in the pipeline? We have a number of different uh, partnerships. We've brought on uh, Warren Robinson uh, onto our board and it's his job to um, follow up on conversations that I have with a bunch of different companies uh, and uh, in M&A opportunities or in a number of uh, different uh, exploratory conversations. Uh, nothing, of course, that's material or that we can announce, uh, but we'll make sure we, when we do, we announce it. Um, we have uh, Mark Cremini, who is our head of sales, and he's currently negotiating a number of uh, large uh, isolate sales uh, deals. Um, currently, we have uh, our, our first deal is with uh, Biosciences out of uh, Los Angeles, and they're buying uh, up to $6 million worth of isolate uh, from us starting in the fourth quarter of this year from Poland. Wow. You guys have a lot of business going on. We do. Now, uh, before I get into the next question, one of the things that we talked about is that you guys have the potential to be one of the only companies in the sector to be revenue positive. Yeah, I mean, that was always my goal. Uh, again, Slocan is only four months old. Uh, it really a year, you know, the original uh, 
vehicle that I came on to as CEO, uh, the goal was to try to find uh, a company in this space. Uh, and the second goal uh, was to get to revenue as soon as possible and to get to um, uh, cash flow positive revenue as soon as possible. And I really want to kind of break those records. And I know it's really important to investors, especially now they're seeing a lot of companies in the cannabis space. I want to make sure that, you know, everyone knows we're not in the cannabis space. We're only in CBD, but, you know, we sort of get painted with, with that brush. And so a lot of the companies that come out with these tremendous, uh, forecasts and unfortunately haven't met those and so what i want to do is be one of uh, one of the companies uh, in that grouping uh, that hits revenue in record time and i believe if we can hit our revenue targets uh, in the fourth quarter of this year we will break records wow that's incredible and i'm sure you guys will uh, it's looking really good i mean you know uh, if I if I look at it from a risk perspective, say, okay, w where can these guys go wrong? So if we take it from the step of farming, while well, they have farming experts that have been farming this land in Poland for, for 20 years, and their family have been farming for 20 years prior to that, and they've never, ever lost a crop. Uh, huh. Uh, That's and, impressive. And I was just there, and they've had record temperatures this year. Uh, obviously, climate change has play, played a huge part in that, or the, the reason for it. Uh, and we, they've been able to increase their yield. So uh, when I was there two weeks ago, the plants were up to my knees, and they're going to be harvesting now uh, two and a half weeks uh, from today. So they have the we have the farming down. I feel very comfortable there. You take it to the next step where you have extraction. And my team has been extracting in Canada now for the last five years, uh, and they've brought over a thousand batches. And now we've built that same system on a much larger scale uh, in Europe, uh, and we're about to you know turn on the lights uh, in the fourth quarter. So uh, if we and we've now got the sales contract, so we have all the pieces in place uh, to definitely uh, have uh, revenues in, in the fourth quarter. That is incredible. Now earlier last month, you announced an LOI with Sequoia Cannabis in anticipation of a bumper crop yield in Poland this year. We'd love to know more about your plans for this anticipated yield. Okay, so um, I have to be careful about talking exactly about you know how much yield and this sort of thing and, and forecasting numbers until we start to generate revenues. Uh, but what I can tell you is again because the temperatures have been uh, a lot warmer in Europe and especially in Poland, uh, our yield uh, is going to be larger this year than we expected. So we're going to have extra uh, biomass available. Great. And again, speaking to my earlier point of wanting to hit revenues as soon as possible and be cash flow positive, uh, we were reached out to uh, by another processor uh, and uh, they were interested in buying some of our biomass to process. And so we had extra biomass that I know I wasn't going to be able to produce this year. So we're going to sell up the extra uh, biomass. So it was a little bit of icing on the cake this year. Oh. That's nice. Yeah. Now you guys also did a twenty-four million dollar raise. Yes. Um, what expansion plans do you have in the horizon with that twenty-four million that you raise in financing? Well, the twenty-four million, uh, you know, and it was great because we got some excellent institutional investors in that round, which I'm very excited about, and I'm working with, uh, you know, strategically for uh, different objectives and potentials in the future. But with this twenty-four million, what it uh, allowed us to do. Uh, was to uh, pick up the Olimax acquisition uh, to buy their uh, seeds, which are, they're one of uh, only four companies in the EU have, that have their own registered uh, high concentration CBD seed, which is very, wow. very important. Yes. Uh, and they had uh, over 40 tons of seeds ready for us to plant this year wow. to go 1,500 he hectares in Poland, which will make us the largest hemp farmers in all of Poland this year. Wow. So that money allowed us to buy that company Company, to buy the seeds, to buy the harp, or to buy the planting equipment, now to buy the harvesting equipment, and to build our second extraction facility in uh, Poland. So, we've just named them in a press release we put out today. So, the JV with Dragonfly in Romania, uh, which is really just a tolling station for us, is named the Origin, uh, and the the second facility which we're building right now in Poland is called the Nexus. Uh, and uh, the third will be a larger facility that takes both the technology and, and what we've learned in Romania and in Poland to build an even larger extraction facility that will be over twice the output uh, of both of the first two uh, facilities called the Horizon. So uh, the money's allowed us to do all of that. Uh, and uh, so it's a busy year. <laughs> yeah, you guys seem like you're crazy busy. Yeah. Now, 
you touched on the press release. Maybe now is a good time to talk about it. Sure. Do you want to maybe go over the press release that you sure. announced today? Yeah. I mean, the, the press release, when I was over in Poland a couple of weeks ago, I went to go uh, meet with the farmers and to tour our, our, our different plots just to see how the plants were doing. And I brought a film crew with me to, uh, to, to film and to interview these ladies. And um, it's really a generational story, what we have in Poland. So you can imagine, um, you know, the two ladies of Olomax who we acquired, as I said earlier, they've been, they've been farming and, and uh, harvesting hemp uh, and, and making products in the CBD space for well, CBD products for five years and uh, they're farming for, for 20 years. They have a, so, uh, Christina has a son and her son is Matthias. And so Matthias grew up with, her, with his grandfather in the fields and now with wow. his mother in the fields. And now he's a Stokana employee. And Great. He's been brought on to uh, manage uh, all the harvesting and the build out of both the Nexus facility and the uh, Horizon facility in, in Poland. And it's really a great story. And it, it, you'll see, if you see the YouTube video we produced, you'll be able to see his story and his mother's story. And uh, uh, he's worked for a very large harvesting company uh, that is uh, focused on how to properly harvest CBD. But a lot of people, you know, it's like any new industry, you learn as you make mistakes. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, Olimax has made these mistakes and they've learned how to harvest and they've also learned how to um, uh, dry uh, the material because CBD is quite delicate uh, and depending on how you harvest it and how you dry it and how you store it, you're going to have CBD degradation. And what uh, Matthias has done for Olimax and what he's going to do now for Stilcana is to manage that process. And so we're very lucky to have him on board. Uh, he sends me you know, pictures daily. Uh, currently at the Nexus facility, the uh, um, floor has been laid and they're, pu they're putting up the structure now uh, and so uh, we're hoping to get the facility up and running a little bit sooner than the fourth quarter but uh, we're thinking you know I'm, I'm pushing them hard. Hey guys how you doing here with Jason and one of the questions that our members were asking was what catalyst are there that investors could look forward to um, over the next little bit for Stokana. Is there any catalyst that we can kind of look forward to? I mean, there's going to be a lot of catalysts. Uh, I think the, the biggest catalyst is going to be revenue. Uh, yes. You know, and that's what we're, we're striving for. We, we will be uh, generating revenue the moment that our extraction facilities are up and running. We have uh, two contracts, the one with uh, Dragonfly Biosciences and then, of course, the one with Biosciences out of Los Angeles. So uh, as soon as uh, as soon as those uh, facilities are up and running, uh, we'll be generating revenue. With Romania, I can tell you that everything is ready to go and ready to turn on uh, and that we're just going through final permitting process. Uh, so the permitting process to build a facility like this is quite onerous and there's a lot of different stages that you need to meet. But we do expect that we'll meet all of those. Uh, you know, we're at the final yard line. Now we're getting into operational permits. So we've got all the permits that you need in order to uh, you know, uh, produce CBD. Now we're just dealing with like the operational permits. So um, uh, by the fourth quarter of this year, I mean, really, it's going to be about bringing in revenues. And that's going to be the major catalyst. Uh, because, uh, you know, again, we have all the pieces, it's a very exciting story, but people want to see where are your revenues. So I Absolutely. think that's your biggest catalyst. I agree. How about your share structure? Is there any thing that you want to talk about, like as far as your share structure, like every company share structure is different. Some plan to have a lot held by by management yeah. so that there's not this huge overhang out sure. there in the market, like a huge float. Uh, some like to issue some to some large institutions yeah. to get involved. Sure. Is there anything you want to talk about with your share structure? Because I know it's pretty small share structure. Yeah, it's a small share structure. Uh, you know, we, we do have a number of warrants out there that are in the money. Uh, and so we've been, you know, it's a good and bad thing because you've got, of course, 50 cent warrants, people are double their investment right now. Yes. And so, but that's good because it brings more money. So we've got that's right. 4 million that uh, we expect to come in over the next Very year, nice. which is, which is great. Uh, and what we tried to do with this latest financing was uh, put it into some institutional hands. And uh, there's a number of, very uh, important funds that have invested in us in this last round. And that's the future is to try to get, you know, uh, those groups uh, getting more involved in the market and taking out a lot of, you know, retail shareholders, because, you know, this is always sort of where we're at right now is, 
you've got a lot of retail shareholders that are involved and a retail shareholder will get emotionally involved. And so when they see the stock price tick down a little bit, they get worried and they think, okay, there must be something wrong with the company. Whereas an institutional uh, investor looks at a little bit more uh, long-term. Uh, so we're trying to uh, transition. And you know, the last time I was in uh, London a, a couple of weeks ago, I was dealing with a couple of larger uh, funds there. They've introduced me to some groups that will be starting to do some institutional road, road shows. Right. Uh, and, uh, um, and, and yeah, so, you know, it's, it's the retail shareholders have been great uh, and they've really, really helped us out a lot and we want them involved. And, uh, but I think, you know, looking to more institutional money gives you a little bit more stability. Uh, Absolutely. Because if, you know, one retail shareholder that has some 25 cent stock from our last round, again, we've only been around for four months, you know, this is a very new company. So when we first started and did our first raise at 25 cents, you know, those shares can you know, jittery. And if somebody decides to sell, you know, 200,000 shares in a day, it can actually hurt your stock. Uh, of course. And so uh, that will change as we get more awareness out there and as we grow in a co as a company and as we meet our uh, revenue targets, you're going to see a lot more stability in the market and we look forward to that. Great. I have a really good question. Um, well, actually, I'll bring up one of the questions here. Will Still Canna, this is from Joshua. Thank you, Josh, for your question. Will Still Canna be selling product to North America, South America, and Australia? Well, um, that's a that's a great question. Uh, so, you know, one of the uh, one of our first sales contract out of Poland is with uh, Biosciences, and um, of course, you know, as they're a private labeler and they're going to be buying our isolate, it would certainly make sense for us in the future to. Uh, I mean, that's a very easily deal to get done, right? I mean, yes. If we if we have uh, our products formulated, we just give them our formulations and we give them our isolate or our oil uh, and, and our labels and they can distribute. So I think the U.S. is a very easy deal to get done. Great. It's something that we've looked at. It's something that we're exploring and it's something we're going to do. But again, you know, our main focus right now needs to be fulfilling the contracts that we have in place because Great. if we can fill the contracts we have in place on the large isolate sales, then we're a profitable company. So Absolutely. that's where we want to focus. Now, on the brand side, there is higher margins, of course. And it's something that we're developing with the doctor, uh, and we will, you know, reach that market. As far as Australia, we don't. I don't have any connections there. No one on the board has connections there. Uh, I'm sure it's a fantastic market. And if somebody wants to reach out that has distribution in Australia and and uh, uh, fulfillment, we'd love to hear from them. And what was the third country they mentioned? South America. South America. Again, the same as Australia. We we don't have any contacts there uh, yet or right now. We're wide open to it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think as far as a retail brand goes, uh, Europe would be first, I think U S shortly after that. And then, you know, we'll see about other countries or okay. other continents. Okay, great. Uh, this is another question about still Canna's thoughts about an effort of entering into the U S market. It seems as though our members have an affinity to the U S market. Yeah. Is that something that is like part of your guys? It mandate. I mean, obviously, America is ten times the size of Canada. Yeah. So there's a huge opportunity there. We ha we have all the ingredients in order to make it happen, right? I mean, we have the packager. In fact, we even have the distributor. Uh, and once we've developed the brand, it's a very easy thing for us to accomplish. So, uh, absolutely, for sure. We just Great. want to make sure again, you know, that uh, ninety percent is focused on uh, the sales we already have in the door on on the bulk side. Uh, but ten percent of our time, we are working on developing a line. And, it, and the U.S. makes a lot of sense, and it's uh, we have all the ingredients in order to move that forward. Very good. I have a question. True. One of the things I've noticed with companies as they move along with achieving their goals is they try to move to a senior exchange, whether it be the TSX or the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. We've seen this with a lot of companies. Is that something that you guys are looking to do in the future? Are you looking to move to a bigger exchange? I think it makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, that's the idea is as you grow, you can get on to uh, – exchanges and as you move up uh, there's uh, less impediments for investors to get involved so for sure once we've uh, reached our targets i think the logical move would be obviously to uh, the venture uh, yeah. or up to the, the if we can you know we get 
<laughs> we meet the requirements, we'll go as high as we can go. Uh, and then of course, dual list on the on the NASDAQ. Uh, we are looking at potentially listing in, in London. Great. Uh, we've met with a, with a group in London and a couple of the funds uh, that are there believe that this is a story uh, as it's European, uh, it would really speak to the European investors and to the UK investors. I mean, they can go on the shelves at their local uh, drugstore and buy uh, Dragonfly products right off the shelf. That's so fantastic. for a company that's gonna be putting you know, the CBD in those bottles for them, it would make sense. Uh, to be on exchange over that. So we're, we're looking at that as well. Another question I have actually is, and I mean, you're an expert at this, so I want to ask you, why can't, why is Health Canada not legalizing CBDs? Or I mean, do you have any insight on what, like, because legalizing, they're legalizing edibles yeah. October 17th. They legalized cannabis last year, October 17th. But why CBDs? No, I don't understand. Do you have any so, insight on that? Uh, is CBD is very new. Uh, you know, a lot of people on the inside have known about CBD for quite some time, but when I was talking about CBD two years ago, the investment community did not care. I mean, yeah, they, you know, it was all about, you know, first it was, um, you know, your LPs, your licensed producers in Canada, and then that had a huge run. And then you had, you know, your multi-state operators in the U.S. and different brands, and then that had a huge run. And so now all of a sudden the investment community and the people, the drivers behind that sort of community are now looking to what's next. And so uh, CBD uh, was something that was sort of bubbling up a little bit when, when we uh, had the, the fortune to get financed and, and move forward. Uh, but, you know, governments and um they take a little bit of time to catch up on new things. So they're going to try to figure out what, you know, what is this, what is CBD? And of course, because, um, you know, CBD, as far as a lot of people think, and it's, it's not me, but a lot of people believe that there's a lot of health benefits with it. I, I actually do believe it personally, but, um, you know, as a, as a company in this space, you can't say that it has any health benefits to of it. Course. But, um, you know, there's, there's no doubt that the people want it. And I think the government's going to have to figure out what it is and how they're going to push it. So what Canada's doing, you know, is maybe they're protecting their LPs. Right. Because uh, these LPs took a lot of money out of the market uh, and they really the government, I think, would like these companies to succeed. So I think a lot of the licensing will go under the existing LPs and there'll be a lot of new companies that are coming in through this. It'd be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, I think we'll learn a lot about October. Uh, we'll learn a lot more in October when they come out with, with, with sort of the edibles plan. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Can Canada's a. a beautiful place and you know we would love to have an extraction facility here yeah, and, and, and get involved uh, but I would like to sort of see you know what the structure is going to be before we do that and I think that you know potentially uh, still kind of partnering up with a company that has uh, maybe the growing uh, or the, the, the acreage uh, and that maybe we would build the extraction facility could be a very interesting fit, fit for Canada. Yeah I think that, that that would be fantastic I would love to see it personally um, because I do take CBDs and I feel like there are health benefits. I mean, I hear it every single day. Uh, I, there's so many stories. Um, and I mean, every single day, you know, talking to cab people in cabs, talking to people in the street. When I, when I, when I was in, uh, raising money, I would go into the, my first few meetings and I'd talk about the CBD thing and then find out that half the people in the room were on it. And the other half had a friend that was on it or their parents were on it or somebody was taking it and everybody had told me that they have uh, that they see these benefits so absolutely um, I think there's you know there's certainly something to it uh, and the people certainly want it and the governments will catch up uh, and I mean I think CBD should be read as readily available as vitamin C that's great I have another question here from Joshua are you in a rush no okay perfect is there a common CBD industry standard metric for cost per unit CBD? And if so, what is still Canada's number <clears throat> in comparison to other CBD producers? Example, marijuana producers have a cost per gram. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> good question, um, Josh. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, our cost per gram is estimated around 50 to 80 cents per gram. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now we're able to produce it for less for a number of reasons. Uh, one uh, main reason is that we're working. You know, our facility in Romania uh, is in this tiny little uh, village called Belista. In fact, we'll be either the first or second largest employer of this small area, and 
you know, a lot of companies that are in our space will know this, that if you're looking for sort of a PhD that knows anything about extracting, you're going to be paying this person a minimum of $300,000 a year. Wow. I can tell you that our PhD uh, is a lot less than that. Uh, I can also tell you that our uh, workers with forklifts and, and this sort of thing are, you know, the, the cost of living in Romania in this little village is quite low. So our, oh, I bet. our, our production costs are, are definitely on the low side. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, what the rest of the industry is paying right now, again, it's really new. I, I, I can tell you that uh, there's companies right now that are paying uh, 11 euros per gram wow just to extract wow okay so and you're doing it for 50 to 80 cents yeah so but that's and, and again that that's the big difference that's just now and then but then you take in the prices of isolate prices at 30 you know 380 us per gram it doesn't make sense so you know we've scoured europe looking for an extraction company that could do what we can do i haven't found one uh, <laughs> so it's very difficult for me to give you the, that pricing. What I can tell you is that I do know a company that does extracting. It was the lowest price that we could find in Europe, and it was 11 euros per gram. Wow, that's expensive. so. Uh, and we're estimated, yeah, well, that's like, like what 20 Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Because the euro is it, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make financial sense. Absolutely. Uh, so um, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. No, it's very good. Um, another question. Uh, cannabis is, thank you, Danny boy for this cannabis is a volatile market. Thus investors are reluctant, to, reluctant to invest with companies under a dollar. What's still Canada's view in obtaining investor interest? Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm here, right? I mean, the idea is to just get the story out. Um, and I think the best way to get the story out is through videos. And so that's why we are doing this. Uh, and that's why we set up a YouTube channel, uh, under still Canada, which shows a behind the scenes look of what we're doing. So, you know, our first video, uh, was, uh, with, the, with our doctor, uh, the next video was, uh, in, in Poland, uh, which we're setting up today. I don't think it's up yet, but it's coming. And then the following one will be in Romania and just, you know, showing people where the, where the investors dollars are, are going. And then of course, uh, yeah, we've got, you know, different uh as many different outreaches as we possibly can to get the get the story out uh also meeting with um i was in london at, at a trade show uh called cannabis europa uh and while i was there I was meeting with all the different funds and really it's just getting out there and telling your story uh, obviously uh, a big one will be analyst coverage and we are working towards getting analyst coverage at the stage that we're at right now and as new as we are uh it, it takes time of you course, know, it's, it's only it's a lot four of people, months, right? Yeah, it's, it's only been four months. And so I think we've been able to do some tremendous things in a very short period of time. Uh, and I think you need to when you're looking at companies like this, look into really dig into all the details. And I, I know that the deeper that you dig into Stilcana, the more uh, opportunity that you'll see. I have a question. Uh, one thing I've noticed lately is that uh, Kronos Group came out and said that Health Canada is making it very difficult for these Canadian LPs. Before that, Vivo Cannabis came out and said that Health Canada is making it very difficult for Canadian LPs. Now, what do you think about that? Well, uh... because, I mean, as an investor, I kind of agree with them. But as a person who's focused on health, I got children. Yeah. I kind of agree with what Health Canada is doing. I yeah. mean, they're trying to make sure it's done right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, me, they're rolling out slowly. Yeah. For me, I, I, I don't use cannabis. I, I, I'm not a proponent of it. I think that it's um, it kills brain cells and I don't think it's really a great thing. I also don't think, you know, alcohol is a, is a really a, a great thing. I, what gets me off is, uh, you know, trying to live as long as I can live a healthy life and try to build uh, business and, and enjoy myself in the process. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, building a successful uh, company. So cannabis doesn't really jive with what I'm into. Uh, but for sure, if this is something that people are ingesting, it's something that they enjoy. But I'm also a libertarian. So I think that every drug should be legal. You know, I mean, if you, but and, and regulated in this way that, you know, you are getting the safest product possible. Uh, so yeah, let them regulate it. And, you know, uh, 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 you know, if, if it slows down the process, but, you know, saves people uh, any negative um, complications, then great. Fantastic. And I got one more question for you. I don't see any other questions from the, from the uh, group here. And I know you probably got to run soon. So last question. Bruce Linton has publicly stated that Canada is a waste of time. Okay. 
What do you think about that comment? Well, I understand where he's coming from, right? I mean, you're looking at Canada's, what, just over 30 million people. Uh, and you look at uh, the other populations around the world, just look at our neighbors in the U.S., it's, it's 300 million. Um, you know, somebody quite famous uh, who's a very successful uh, business person, you may know Gene Simmons, you may know Oh, him. yes. And so Gene's a friend of mine, and we've had oh, wow. multiple business ventures in the past. And when he saw what I was doing in Canada at the time, which was a fashion line, he said, what are you bothering wasting your time up there? He goes, you can become the biggest in Canada. What does that mean worldwide? Nothing. He says, you become the biggest in the U.S., and the rest of the world is listening. And, it's true. You know, so it's it's kind of true that way. You know, Canada will will always follow whatever is happening in the U.S. And and the U.S. is very open to you know look at any sort of Canadian uh, superstars and uh, or, or um, businessmen. They've really made it outside of Canada in, in most scenarios, and then Canada will come on. So that's why I think it's really important for us to have our, our U.S. listening. And we do spend a lot of time on marketing to the uh, U.S. because you're dealing with you know a lot more people. Yes. Uh, and it's really a percentage thing. So uh, I don't think Canada is a waste of time. Uh, I just think that if you're going to market in Canada and you're going to focus in Canada, it's a much smaller segment than if you were to focus in Europe, which is 28 countries, or you're going to focus in the U.S., which is you know over 300 million people. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great country. But if you make it uh, in the U.S., Canada will follow. If you make it into Canada, will the U.S. necessarily follow? Not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. No. I think in the cannabis side, that's maybe the only time it's kind of true because we, we came out with legalization uh, on, a, on a large scale. So there's a lot of excitement about that. And you know what the Canada, Canada does have going for it is an investment community. They're really good at um, your startups. You know, I mean, Canaccord has been fantastic with us. And I think, you know, the largest financiers in the world when it comes to cannabis. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're really huge. good at, you know, getting things started. But I think once you've got those started, then you definitely have to you know, market in the U.S. and you have Absolutely. to market in Europe. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for being here today with us. Yeah, I thanks really, for having me. I wish you the best of luck and our community to be watching very closely. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue with this live stream and we're going to show you some more information on Still Canna. And um, we'll continue to watch your story. And if there's anything else that you have that is newsworthy, we'd love to be able to cover it. And who knows, maybe one day... You'll see Rich TV live in Poland or Romania. I, I think, think I'd love to have you. Yeah, I would love to go down there. So maybe we can talk about that too in the future. And if you have any other videos that are worthwhile, we'd love to be able to show it to our community and continue to tell your story. Great. So thank you very much thank for being much. here today. Appreciate I wish it. you the best of luck. Great. Thank you. This is Jason DeSol, the CEO of Still Canna. Thanks, Jason. Right, sure. So we're going to continue with this live stream, and we're going to show you a little bit more information on Still Canna. I believe we have a video that we're going to show now. Is that correct? Is that a video we're going to show now? Yeah. Perfect. So I think we're going to be able to put a video here behind us. Um, Hope you guys are having a good day today. Danny Boy's question is, there's an ocean of cannabis companies. What sets still cannabis products above the rest? And that's a very good question, Danny Boy. What we're going to do is we're going to pull up some information here. We're going to show you a little video, and hopefully that answers your questions. If you guys have any other questions for me personally, feel free to drop it in the live chat. We'll just continue with this live stream, and we're just going to continue to tell you the story. You want me to pull it up? Okay, so how do I pull it up? On here? Oh, with here. It's not going to go through my email. Um, it's got to be a better way to do it. Um, if you go into YouTube, you can find it. Let's go to YouTube. All right. Still canna. Oh, let's scroll down. Still canna. Still canna channel. This one right here? Yes, if you go into the channel, that's the first video is the one from today. Here we go. This one right here. Yeah. Perfect. It's 
roku mieliśmy założenie, że na 2019 rok wyprodukujemy około 16, około 16 ton CBD. Na przyszły rok planujemy znaczne zwiększenie tej produkcji. Myślę, że w bardzo niedługim czasie okaże się, że nasze możliwości są bardzo duże. Jestem właścicielem firmy, właścicielem firmy Olimax. Panowie, wyrosłyśmy razem z Krystyną. To była tradycja, że tak powiem, tradycja rodzinna moja, moich, mojej rodziny to i Krystyny. Jest to taka, powiedzmy, bardzo rodzinna, bardzo rodzinna tradycja, którą my zajmujemy i nasze dzieci. So we're going to grow 1,500 hectares. We're going to process about uh, 500 kilos of plant flowers per day. And that means every day year is more than 150 kilos a day of CBD. My grandfather would be proud of me. Olivas is going to be the biggest grower and producer of CBD in Poland. Our partnership with Olimax brings farmers that have been farming hemp on land just like this one for the last 20 years. And experience isn't something that you can buy. So we're very excited to be working with Olimax. It's really the perfect partnership with the farmers who haven't lost their crops for 20 years and an extraction team that has extracted over a thousand batches of CBD over the last five years. Kąpi przemysłowe jest to duży potencjał, pozwoli na to, że zaistnieje do nowy, nowy gałęzie przemysłu i będą ludzie pozyskiwać dosyć duże dochody. Tam będzie w tym kapitał zagraniczny jest dla nas bardzo cenna i myślimy, że tutaj również z firmą Stykana będziemy dobrze współpracować. Typu proces produkcji, zbioru, do przechowywania, suszenia, siewu, wszystko u nas jest, robimy to zupełnie inaczej niż, niż robi to, że tak powiem, cała reszta. Jesteśmy szalenie, szalenie w tym kierunku innowacyjni. W tym roku wspólnie ze Spilkaną my możemy się stać naprawdę autentatem krajowym że ambicje mamy znacznie wyższe niż, niż tylko, powiedzmy, Polska. Wow, that uh, video looks so impressive. And it's exciting to see what Still Can is doing and to be able to actually sit down with Jason. Hi, really my name is Nate, owner of Grower's House, one of the top suppliers of cultivation equipment in the world. Grower's House, so many cannabis people in the game. So yeah, so just looking into this and doing my research on Still Canna, I'm gonna continue to learn more about Still Canna. I'm gonna continue to bring you guys more. That's our modus operandi here, Rich TV Live, is to bring you guys good quality content, interview CEOs and tell the story. Um, I spoke to Jason about you know going to facilities and, and, and really getting to know this company and hopefully we'll be able to do that moving forward. If you guys have any other questions or concerns or if there's anything you'd like to know, please, Put the comments in the comments of this video. If you like the video, smash the like button, share the video everywhere. And remember, if I win and you win, we all win. So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wish you all the best of luck. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being here today. And I'm going to go and do more research and more due diligence on Still Canon myself. I don't currently believe that this is a company that has a great future. And after speaking to Jason and getting a better idea of what the company is all about, I think it's a company that we have to keep on our watch list. We need to keep on our radar. And I think it has the potential to be a major player in the CBD space. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, 
you're not winning, you're not watching, this is Rich from Rich TV Live. I'm signing out. Have a nice day.